please forgive me for this video. I recorded, edited, and uploaded this entire video before I noticed that I forgot to change the title card on the final edited version, but I had deleted the raw footage off of my NAS before I knew that, and then I went to render it in the way that Resolve renders the video, it overwrote the original file, so I had literally no copy of the edited file or the raw files. So therefore, so forgive me if I try to speed through this video because I spent five hours on this already. You guys completely demolished uh, the, the poll for this particular domain. You guys seem to really be needing some pyro artifacts. So we're gonna be taking a closer look at this domain in particular today and kind of talk about each and every level because there are four different levels and you can only Come start on. to farm this at level 30. We're, we're just gonna go ahead and go over all four levels. Now, the biggest things to know about this domain in particular is that Cryo is going to be your best friend here. Um, I will say that Kaya is my MVP. He works very, very solid on every single level of this domain. And I would highly encourage you to build him if you don't already have him built. But honestly, any cryo based character can still do wonders as long as you have something on them that makes them at least half competent as a DPS. But we'll talk more about characters at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and start with level one here. We have a Leyline Disorder that states that the duration of the Frozen status is greatly increased. Uh, literally, okay. And when Superconduct is triggered, an energy blast will occur, dealing damage to surrounding enemies. So Superconduct is our friend, which if we actually look here, you can see we do have some Electro Slimes and then we have a bunch of Hydro Slimes. So for this stage in particular, this one's gonna be pretty easy and we can kind of clear this rather fast using literally Kaya and Lisa. Now for this particular level, we are going to have to defeat 20 enemies while protecting the monolith. The good thing about this is that we don't actually have to worry too much about the time limit. We just have to worry about the uh, health of the monolith, but we're going to basically have six electro slimes and a bunch of hydro slimes coming at us. Now, one thing to note for this particular stage, if you do end up needing something to help you out, uh, whatever your main DPS is, you can kind of go with an essential oil for your liking. Uh, for me personally, I'm running Kaya as my main DPS. So a frosting essential oil would do great because it's gonna increase my cryo damage by 25% just fine. Uh, one thing that you could do is if you feel like you're taking a lot of damage, you could actually end up using an insulating potion, which would help you resist some of the electro damage. Or if you feel like you're having issues with the hydro damage coming at you, you could go with a desiccant potion as well. Just whichever one feels better to use for you. So for level one, uh, and for actually all of the levels that we're gonna be going over, uh, the main team that I'm gonna be using is Kaya as my main DPS. We have, um, main character as a Geo. We do have Geo instead of Animo. Uh, and then we have Barbara as just my support character. And then we have Lisa just because uh, she's Lisa. So let's go ahead and jump on this. So you'll notice that Kaya is literally just going to be my main stick here. I'm just going to do as much damage with him as possible. One thing I really do like about this particular um, level is that the all the enemies are going to be hovered around the monolith anyways. And something like Lisa works really well because I can just set her up and she's gonna get rid of most of the small little enemies with very little effort. Now, of course, because uh, because these big slimes are actually unaffected by the electro, you know, they're not gonna have any any kind of damage, but it's it's pretty nice that she can take care of all of the hydro slimes. And then a bunch of superconduct damage. See, that just that cleans up so nicely. And we can go ahead and use our first tier. Use Animo or GOMC. And this is our last guy. Easy. Easy peasy. So for level two, our Leyline Disorder is going to be when Melt is triggered, an energy blast will occur dealing damage to surrounding enemies. And when Overload is triggered, you'll be hit by a powerful blast causing you to take damage. So if we look at the enemies that we're gonna be expecting, we have four large Pyro Slimes, two of the Minor Churls, and then two of the Abyss Mages, and we have six minutes to defeat all eight enemies. So since everything here kind of focuses on Pyro, one of the 
things to consider is that if you needed to, you could go for a heat shield potion. Uh, and then of course, whichever essential oil makes sense for you here. The one thing to call out though, is that overload is going to make us take damage. So try to avoid bringing an electro character if you don't have sticky fingers like I do. Otherwise, um, you should be fine. Just make sure that you don't trigger overload. So since Electro was going to be pretty bad for this level, I just switched Lisa out for Amber. But similar concept still applies here. We're basically going to uh, just survive. All right. So one thing about these Pyro Slimes is that if you get too close too quickly, they do seem to... Something about them where they just won't <laughs> trigger that Pyro infusion there, which can kind of cause you some issues. It just kind of slows you down more than anything, but we'll, we'll see a lot more of that in the uh, in the final stage of this domain. So just kind of using Kaya here, you'll see that he does pretty quick damage of things. Now these Mita Trolls, I uh, tend to try to freeze them if I can. And the one thing about this particular setup with Amber is that Amber's not typically very good here because she ends up a lot of her damage is resisted when they're infused with the pyro from that centerpiece there. So the one thing that I try to do is end up using the melt and then try to trigger the, or I'm sorry, use cryo to try to freeze them and then melt them with amber if possible. And we can see there. All right. So for these guys, just try to use your either melt. Um, this is, I, I actually really like Barbara here for this. Plus, she keeps us uh, pretty healthy while we're doing this. And I'm going to let that guy... Let that guy sit there for a second. I'm actually going to freeze him really quick. Nah, still got that off, unfortunately. Since this guy's lower, I'm just going to go ahead and try to kill this guy. One thing about the uh, the Abyss Mages is usually you want to try to keep them staggered if you can. Either by freezing them is fine, um, using charged attacks is fine. Usually Kaya's E will do really well here, or um, your main character's E. If you are using Animo MC, it works really well. Um, mainly charged attacks work really well. If you can headshot with Amber um, or another bow character, that works. But keeping them staggered so they don't put their shield back up and then also so they don't do that like volcano move that they do. <sighs> so at level three, our ley line states that when superconduct is triggered, an energy blast will occur dealing damage to surrounding enemies. But when overload is triggered, we will be hit by a powerful blast causing us to take damage. So it sounds like Electro. Yep. So we can see here a bunch of Electro enemies and that means that uh, Cryo of course will still be good, but Pyro is back off of the plate on this one. One of the things that I will say here is Lisa doesn't do amazing in this stage. She can still be used for certain things like the hill trolls will still take damage from her, of course, and the uh, the Sinsen mage can be OK, but the large electro slimes will actually resist all of the electro damage that you're trying to deal. And the Sinsen mages actually have a really high electro resistance natively. So you're going to be doing a ton of resisted damage to them anyway. So I would try to personally avoid using an electro character on this stage, particularly. The first stage isn't nearly as bad because you're only dealing with six of these guys and all 14 of these can take uh, electro damage. But on this stage, the majority of the enemies are going to resist what you're dishing. So, of course, with this level, since everything is going to be electro, uh, an insulating potion would make a ton of sense here. And then any kind of essential oils that you need, of course, could help. Just for the purposes of this video, I am going to bring in Lisa just because I don't want to let my finger slip and accidentally do some kind of overload damage. I'd rather do resisted damage than hurt myself, at least in this stage. What we're going to do here is pretty standard. Just going to go after these slimes first and kill everything. One thing that we did notice in the uh, previous video is that if you get in between some of these electro slimes, it will actually cause an electric current to flow between them, which actually ends up hurting you. So if you can space yourself out so that you don't end up getting in between two electro slimes so that you can avoid that if possible. So here, just gonna try to do as much damage as we can. Try to keep ourselves healthy if possible with Barbara. 
And as soon as we kill this guy, I'm actually going to pop Lisa's ult here. Get these hill trolls at least affected by something. Yeah, so that superconduct can try to try to do some work there. There we go. That was some decent damage. That superconduct's looking nice. Not today, slime boys. Not today. I really like um, Geo MC here. Like, honestly, I think Kaya is my MVP for this level, um, for this domain in general, actually. And Geo MC is definitely a close second. I mean, just the versatility that it gives you is so nice. Um, the one thing that I dislike about them is the sometimes getting caught on like the Geo constructs and stuff, but the pros highly outweigh the cons here. All that superconduct, boys. Yeah. Alright, so we're getting ready to hit the Sin Sin Mage. What I typically like to do with the Sin Sin is try to keep them wet so that we can freeze them with this particular comp. Because if you can prevent them from doing stupid shielded attacks and stuff like that, it uh, definitely is nice. That's Superconduct, hopefully. Uh-oh, that's not good. Let's see if I can heal through this. Oh, she was frozen. She's still frozen. I can't. <laughs> Come on. Barbara allows, allows me to heal through that. And we're good. So level three is not horrible. It, it just feels like it takes forever because of how many waves there are. The fact that there's four separate waves with five enemies for the first three in a row it just feels like it drags and drags and drags but other than that this one's pretty straightforward first two waves are literally the exact same thing back to back so they're pretty simple once you get the hang of where things spawn and how you can kind of get rolling into things and then after that you know defeating five of the large slimes just takes time just because they soak up so much damage and then the Sin Sin Mage, if you're bringing Barbara, you can easily keep them frozen for a lot of this and just literally whittle them down while not taking a whole lot of damage. The only damage that you're really going to take is from the Sin Sins flying around. So, yeah. So, our final level at level four. This is the one that I have the most trouble with with this particular team, but it, I have done it. So, we're going to keep trying. Uh, so, our Leyline Disorder says that when Melt is triggered, an energy blast will occur, dealing damage to surrounding enemies. And when Overload is triggered, we will take damage. So, the thing about that is when we look at our enemies, you can see it's almost the same as level two, except we have two less Pyro Slimes. And then it's the exact same two uh, Mitre Trolls and two Pyro Abyss Mages. Now, these kind of spawn one after another they're not in waves like we just saw on level three and it does actually say defeat six opponents within 30 seconds it's actually 60 seconds it gives you 60 to begin with and then every time you defeat an enemy it gives you an additional 60 seconds so you kind of have to act fast this is a kind of a large dps check just to make sure that you can get through the enemies quicker rather than later I like to think of this stage in terms of stairs so i think about walking up a set of steps when I try to kill one enemy early and just by the nature of how the enemies are going to be coming to you, the other enemy will typically be sort of low at least. And then you can kind of use that low enemy as your time backup. So I like to try to defeat one Pyro Slime and then start working on one of the Mitre Trolls. And then once my time gets low, I go over to the slime that's already weak and finish it off to get the extra time. And then I start taking down one of the healthier Mitre Trolls. And then once my time gets low, defeat the one that's already kind of low and then back and forth and back and forth. And what that also allows you to do is stagger the enemies to a point where you end up having one Abyss Mage and one Mitre Troll on the field. And you can take out Come one on, of the Abyss Mages moving. usually relatively quickly. And then that just leaves you with a Mitre Troll that's already weak and an Abyss Mage. And then you can just kill the Mitre Troll and you, all you have to worry about is the one Abyss Mage. 
Now you also can do the whole thing where um, you leave the Abyss Mage on the opposite side of the domain and they'll just sit there. They won't actually target you. I did find that out in recording the previous video. I don't know if we'll get an example of it here, but you can do that. So that is also an option. So for this particular level, since everything is going to be dealing a ton of pyro damage, heat shield potion makes a ton of sense here. And then any kind of essential oils that you may be using, like uh, frosting essential oil, uh, would also help. So very similar story, since I don't want to slip up and get trigger happy, I am going to switch Lisa back out for Amber, and we're just gonna run it like this. Now, one interesting thing is about the two slimes that start, um, one is going to spawn right in this corner closest to you on your right, and another one is going to spawn in the furthest corner away from you on your left. If you get too close to the slimes in the beginning, it seems like they notice you and they back off and they won't infuse themselves with pyro like we were talking about earlier and that in this stage is bad it slows you down because you need that dps to start happening asap and since melt is going to do additional damage we want that to go through faster so what i like to do is at least start heading towards another one so that this guy doesn't see me and then come back and as soon as he's infused with pyro you can just kind of do your thing so i'm gonna wait to use any ults until this guy at least gets closer And now we can start doing some damage. And you'll notice because Geo MC helps us out with um, the crystallize there, we end up getting a pyro shield, which is nice. And there's no penalty for having um, Amber do any kind of reactions in here, which makes this really nice. I'm just gonna use Barbara to heal myself up there for a second. Now you'll notice we are starting to get low on time. So what I'm gonna do is start working on this pyro slime here. All right, so there's my 60 seconds back. So now we just have to worry about this Mitre Troll. Now, one thing that's nice about the Mitre Trolls is they can be frozen relatively easy. Careful, because we can also be frozen somehow. I don't think in all the runs that I've done on this stage, I was frozen not once. It's very interesting. But same still applies for Amber. If you need to, you can use her as a, uh, a melt inducer which is kind of nice all right so we're starting to get low on time need to get this kaya ult off this geo construct messing with me there all right so that's nice so now we're gonna have another hit uh, minor troll coming at us tons of melt damage here which is good gonna make sure they stay melted or frozen so that we can get the melt off there Go ahead and use this. Just don't want to get hit by that guy while he's doing that. All right, so now we have an Abyss Mage. This one always spawns first. It always spawns this one for some reason. Which is fine, no big deal. I really hate the Abyss Mages, so I usually try to go for them ASAP. Um, even if that means that I sacrifice a little bit of time on that Mitre Troll just because, oh man, I hate them so bad. Especially because of that move right there. But, of course, keeping them staggered is great. Fortunately, that was not super hot. Let's go ahead and hit this. Starting to get low on our time, but... Nice. There's our 60 seconds. Now that Abyss Mage, you'll see he's just kind of standing over there. He's not going to do anything. Cool. So we could just kind of, we could in theory just leave him there. Since we are kind of short on time anyways, we need to kind of act fast. And after that, it's literally just getting this guy dead. Getting this guy dead. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Killing this guy as quickly as we can. Now that fireball does follow you around, which is unfortunate. It's just one of those hazards you kind of have to deal with though. A minute and 13 left, we should be good. Boom, there we go. So five minutes and 46 seconds definitely is not like, 
the fastest time in the world, but with four completely free to play players, um, I think that's pretty decent. And that proves that it is completely doable. But can we do it faster? Come on. So to do this at least semi fast, this is something that I would kind of suggest two cryo, a crowd control and a hydro. Um, the hydro can literally be anyone, just somebody to help break down the abyss mage shields a little bit faster. Uh, double cryo, because not only is it going to give you the extra crit rate and stuff like that, um, just two cryo units in this domain it makes a ton of sense. If they're both DPS focused, that's amazing. If you do have something like Diona, she actually does make a little bit of sense. As long as you can crowd control them into her uh, AOE for her ult, then she's perfectly fine. She's going to be dealing cryo damage anyways, or if you already have her built as a DPS, you know, she's she's good. Chong Yun makes a ton of sense here. Um, everybody kind of makes a ton of sense here. All right. So the first thing that I want to do here is still run this way so that this guy doesn't. Yep. So he doesn't lag behind. And then from here, I'm just going to let Ganyu do her thing. So the first time when I did this, I got 336 and 339. Well, that's not great. Jesus. Uh, so slow. What? Why did it move him all the way out here? That's... That's so stupid. I don't know why it does that. Three twenty-three. So that was at least faster than last time, but still, that was slow. One more time. Oh, I guess that guy can just kind of stand over there sometimes too. That's nice. Bruh, come on. Nice. Appreciate that. Put that ice resistance down. Ooh, that was kind of nice. Aw, oh, come on. Okay, that was a tad bit faster. 302. You could probably squeeze out like. You could probably get like 245, probably like 230 if you really had like some perfect like situations and some insane DPS. Uh, but that's pretty much the gist of it, guys. As far as character choices to go with this domain, obviously any kind of cryo characters that you have even semi built up are going to be simply amazing here. Kaya is my MVP for this. Um, his elemental skill scaling is stupid good and uh, he just works really, really well here. Ganyu, of course, makes tons of sense if you pulled for her uh, and got her and Chang Yun makes a tons of sense as well. Diona is probably my least favorite, but she's still, I can, I can honestly foresee some really good setups with her. As long as you have some kind of crowd control with her, maybe like Sucrose or Venti, uh, just something to keep the enemies inside of her ult whenever you need it. And then you can freeze them inside of it with your Hydro character if you have one. Like I can see some really nice setups with it. Outside of Cryo though, I think that Geo is a really strong point. Um, pyro to certain extents makes some sense on level twos and four. When I first started farming this because I was needing um, artifacts for Deluke, I actually brought Deluke in on level four just to help get Pyro infused back onto enemies in between the infusion that they get from that centerpiece. 
I just literally wanted to try to um, speed up the process of getting melt applied to them. So I would bring somebody like Deluke or even Bennett works really good on levels two and four. Uh, level one and three, not so much. Try not to bring Pyro there, but Electro is still really good on level one and three, not so much. Definitely level one. Um, but level three is kind of the oddest one out of all of them, in my opinion. Hydro characters make tons of sense. Vaporize doesn't give you any kind of bonuses, but it also doesn't penalize you at all. So that's really good. Animo is, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting ready to do a video on Swirl and I think maybe that will help um, in my better understanding of Swirl and hopefully that will help me um, kind of get back into Animo characters a little bit more because I was super into Animo. I was like, these are some of the best characters in the game. And I don't know, I just recently just kind of fell out of love with them. So obviously they're great for crowd control like Venti and uh, Sucrose. Animo MC, not so much. I definitely prefer the Geo variant, like I said early on. Um, Jean, and eh, she doesn't really have a ton of crowd control capabilities. If you could set up the fall damage thing, like maybe that would be a good enticing reason to bring her. But other than that, that's pretty much my suggestions here. So as with all of these videos, I will be putting up another poll after this and we will vote on the next domain. Um, I actually already have the Barber video that was the second video that I worked on today and then I accidentally deleted this video like I said in the beginning. Uh, so I already have the Barber video ready to go. It will come out, um, if you're watching this today, it will come out tomorrow. If, uh, if you're watching this okay. later than the date that it released, then it might already be out. And then, on to Lisa and that swirl video I talked about, but hey, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for watching. See you later. Major shout out to Cherry Blue, who is a YouTube member.